However, we can do better than that. <laughs> um, we can include space. So, in fact, not only can we know when the epidemic started and how quick it's growing, we can actually also find out where it started. And that is really the point of phylodynamics and phylogeography. <coughs> so, this is my, my, po my, my one slide poster for phylodynamics. So, on the left here, you have sequences combined with the epidemiological data. So here is a tree and the different colours represent avian, swine, human sequences. And we have a nice strong molecular clock signal. And in fact, using those ideas of infective population size I described, you can start to look at how many infections you get through time. But you can do more than that because if you integrate your evolutionary model with your epidemic model, and also with a kind of spatial network model, you can do things like calculate the sources, routes, and speed of spread of an epidemic. You can also do things like calculate the rate of acquisition of drug resistance, and you can calculate cross-species transmission rates. So I will show you kind of how you do this. And it, I'm going to start by talking about locations on trees. So this is our very simple little part of a tree. And this is our sequence one and sequence two as we had before, except now we know that sequence one was found in location one, sequence two found in location two. And what we want to calculate is, well, okay, which location was the source of these two, for these two? Alternatively, in fact, using the exact same programme and same code, we could ask, instead of locations, these could be traits. And these, these, these traits, they could be species. So it could be, um, so the first sequence could be from birds and the second from humans. And you could be asking, well, OK, which, which, um, which was it, birds or humans, that was the source? <coughs> so generally, in phylodynamics, I really consider it as two, there's, there's two parts to it. There's the forensic scenario, which you actually started to hear about this morning. And this is really for, you're trying to ask which individual infected which other individual. And to do that, you need very dense sampling. You obviously, if you're going to, if you're going to start saying, oh, well, it was definitely A that infected B, well, you better have made sure you've sampled all of the individuals that it could have possibly have been. However, there's another way you can use it as well. And you can, you can look instead for exactly which individual infected which individual, you can look for generalised patterns. And here, here, this is where you're trying to quantify the overall transmission rates between locations and between hosts. And here you don't need to have quite so dense sampling. This is more for the situation of general surveillance. OK, so <coughs> back to our which location is the source. We have a time scale tree. And this little branch length here, that's, that's time t. And fundamentally, we're asking, what is the probability of, of um, a, of being in state a after time t? Now, remember. Now we're thinking in population genetics, so now time is going to run backwards from, from the present. So this is what we know, and a time t ago, which location were we in? In general, in fact, what you're really trying to calculate is, given that you started in state x, so here x is just location a, what is the probability of being in state y, some other state, after time t? And you would do this using this matrix equation. Let me show you. <coughs> so here, x, this is a vector. And it has, think of it as a column vector, probability of being in location A. Well, because we know this is location A, that's a 1. Probability of being in location B at this particular point, well, that's 0, because it's not in B. Then 
we have a transition rate matrix which describes the probability of, go of um, going from A to B or B to A and all the combinations. And notice what I've written here on the diagonal. That, is, that means 1 minus then whatever else is, is the sum of whatever else is on there because, in fact, we're going to add everything adds to 1. And so when you see a bigger matrix, normally you don't put these in because they're obvious from all these other ones. So you have your transition rate matrix and you matrix multiply it by your starting off column vector for what is the first location. And then you get to the probability of being still in A or turning to B according to the matrix. This here, in fact, in the practical, you, you will be able to see these values, because these values appear, appear here. In fact, you can see I've only done half of the, half of the problem. There's the other half coming this way. And you add, the, you add those together to give, the final, to give the final probability. <coughs> so in a slightly more complicated example, so now I have four locations. And you'll see here that I actually have many instances of the virus at each of the locations on the tree. So my goal is to infer what this matrix is. It all happens in BEAST, and you'll see how this happens. Um, but essentially, you are trying to estimate those parameters on that tree. <coughs> Oops. This is that same H5N1 data I showed you before. But now, at each tip, I've marked from which region of the world it came from. In this case, I have five regions, Africa, Eastern Asia, Europe, Southeastern Asia, Southern Asia, each in a different color. And I've used BEAST, and I've inferred which region the internal nodes of the tree we're in, and it's been coloured. So that's the tree output. Also, again, within BEAST, and here I'm just showing you the means, I'm not showing you all those confidence intervals, but there are all confidence intervals on here. I've inferred the rate matrix of going from one place to another. And here, hopefully, you can see, although you should be able to see better in the practical, there's dots representing the locations of the, um, of the regions. And there are lines representing the strength of the, um, of the rate matrix between the two. And you can start to see that there is now a transmission pattern, which you have inferred from the rate matrix. <coughs> also, just to show you, you can do it by host as well. Um, I won't show you the rate matrix of the host, but from here you could also you can also calculate what is the rate of going from in the, the red is domestic anseriforms ducks. What is the rate of going from domestic anseriforms to domestic galliforms chickens? What is the rate of transmission from ducks to chickens? What is the rate of transmission from domestic anseriforms to wild anseriforms? The rate of transmission from domestic to wild species, and all of this is calculated from the tree. <coughs> However, I've been describing to you discrete trait models because each thing was in a it was either in a discrete location, it was in one region of the world, or it was in one species. However, particularly when thinking about um, locations, it isn't really true that they're actually discrete populations, and particularly not in this case. This is the actual real distribution of where the samples came from in that data set. And so I kind of put them into five regions of the world, but I mean, you know, they're not really, they're not, they're not really clustered like that. In reality, um, they're just m much more spread out. So what can we do? In that, well, in that case, we can use a spatial diffusion model. Um, so here, instead of discrete traits, we're going to model the spatial coordinates as continuous traits. And we're going to imagine that the viruses are going to diffuse from a point source. 
Um, so in fact, what you're assuming here is the, that the distance of the child node is um, some diffusion path from the ancestral node, assuming that you've uh, allowed a certain amount of time to elapse. So this, from this tree here, each I've marked each of the, the tips, the samples, as a blue dot and the original sample as a red dot. So here, the red dot starts in the middle and the tips have diffused, like, like a Brownian motion diffusion, from that central point. And again, if I plot them time and distance from the source, you can see this kind of spreading out diffusion. So <coughs> Beast will do that kind of diffusion model as well. And the output of that is a summary tree, but each the node of the summary tree is labelled with a latitude and longitude. So you can plot it on this map of the world. And so these lines now, these are the, these are the tree branches, but spread out over the world. And these are the uncertainty rings. In fact, the data is not not, not that great, but these in the certainty rings showing where the virus could be. So you can see that with this, with this kind of model, you can take your samples and infer back to the start where, where did this start from, particularly in an epidemic situation where you would expect this kind of spatial diffusion out from a point source. <coughs> 